This is a lovely little table clock by Joseph Nibb, made in London in about 1680. And the whole series of these table clocks have been described by Ronnie Lee in his famous book. And this is classed as a phase two, the, the case with a slight caddy tap on, beautiful handle, silver casting with the trunnions going into the silver mounts with the silver washers, and the knob, a beautiful wheat sheaf tied on to the handle. How would you like to make your own ebony fret? Isn't it beautiful? And so this wonderful fret is then backed up by black silk behind to let out that lovely sound from the hour bell that rings on and on and on. It's beautiful. And look at these beautiful silver spandrels, the cherub's head. But look at the detail in the wings and the braces onto the wings, the beautiful chasing. And the same, the silver escutcheons on either side over the keyhole. So the escutcheon on the nine side, on the swinging side of the door, is hinged at the top so that it will slip out of the way. It's just got a little clip which goes around the silver-headed pin there. And then you can put the key into the lock and just open the door. The minute hand again, beautiful detail at the root here, lovely slender straight silver shaft going out to point out the time just coming up to 16 minutes past six. So the nib hour hand is extraordinarily beautiful and here it is just covering up the winding square for the going train. But look at the detail in the, the chamfering it's just exquisite. By the signature, you can see that this clock was designed always to have silver mounts and a velvet dial, because Nib, by tradition, would have his signature engraved at the bottom here on the dial plate. But it's covered by velvet, so it couldn't be there, so it's engraved onto the chapter ring. The, the whole, it just is a beautiful balance of quality. It doesn't shout, it's not over the top, and yet it's perfection. And this is a full grand sonnery, and that means that on the hour, it strikes the four quarters, followed by the hour. At the first quarter, it strikes one, and then the hour. Half past, it strikes two quarters, and then the hour. Quarters, three quarters past, or a quarter two, it strikes the three quarters, and then the past hour, until you come back up to the next hour, where again, it will strike the four quarters and the, the hour. And think of the number of quarters it has to do in a 24 hour period. So it's just coming up now to quarter past three. So you'll see the little lever here come round and lift. It'll do one stroke of the quarter bell and then transfer the motion over here. So Nib has used the grand sonnery mechanism as an interesting sight piece for you to come and watch and see it all work. And it's I think, quite fun and fascinating. The back of the clock obviously opens, hinged here, and reveals most beautifully engraved back plate. Nib had a wonderful eye for detail on his back plates. And isn't that wonderful, the, the way the balance of the curve of the engraving balances the curve of the swing of the pendulum, going backwards and forwards across these beautiful uh, flowing flowers. And then these very interesting count wheels, the 
one here, the smallest one here, has the four pins, and the four pins are for the quarters. And so they're laid out with more room increasing so that it, it get, has time to strike four on the hour. And then the pin lifts the rock lever, which lifts the locking lever, which releases the count wheel. And the count lever then will count out the hours. And Nib always makes the most beautiful bells. And if you listen to this one, it will ring and ring and ring. Just you wait. And now we're just coming up to half past three. You'll see the two operations and then the three operations. So now watch the quarter count wheel for the third quarter, one, two, three. Still ringing. Just about stopped now. Isn't that wonderful? Nib, I say he was perfection in everything he did. And how's that for an hour bell that goes on and on and on? It's lovely. <laughs>